Welcome to the Cinema Gold Show. I'm your host, Larry Lees. On today's episode of Netflix Roulette, we're actually not going to pick a random movie to review, but instead we're giving our review of The Man from Toronto. Of course, we'd like to thank our sponsor, Pondex, for sponsoring this episode. Check them out today at pondex.com. Use the promo code Larry21 for 10% off your order. We also now have merch available. You can check it out today. The link will be in the description. And now on to our review of The Man from Toronto. This review does not contain any spoilers, just warning. The Man from Toronto follows the misadventures of a New York bum and an international assassin after their paths cross as a result of an Airbnb mix-up. This man is an imposter. Objection. I mean, no, stop. I'm interrupting that. Because those are, those, are, those are allegations with no ground. You're an imposter and cut it out. Films that manage to pleasantly exceed expectations are great. The Man from Toronto is exactly one of these types of films that I had very little, little hope of actually enjoying. I was aware of issues it had for it, it had face, I should say, during production. But also, for the most part, I don't really find Kevin Hart funny. So him being one of the top actors in a comedy had me bracing myself before it had even started. This actually made for some pretty fun and casual viewing. Man from Toronto would make for a good Friday night film with some company that you could share the more ridiculous laughs with. There is definitely a massive buddy hint about the film. Completely mismatched pairing from two very different backgrounds coming together for the greater good. Granted, this is a more outrageous take on the genre, bearing away from a more traditional cop-centric narrative and stepping into the world of international crime and the underworld networks that move in that circle. As I previously said, Kevin Hart would be usually be enough to put me off watching a film because he always turns up as the same version of himself, no matter what is going on around him. While that was certainly the case in The Man from Toronto, it's like everyone involved knew he was the constant variable, so everything else had to bend to accommodate him. This is where Woody Harrelson's work brilliantly. Admittedly, he was always the reason I had any interest in watching this film. I think he has fantastic comedic chops but in a drier, more cynical way that nicely diluted how over-the-top Hart can get when he really goes for it. I need to speak to the client. I need to speak to the client, too. Are you just going to parrot everything I Are say? Are you just going to parrot everything I say? I'm surprised at you, gentlemen, that you could actually believe that this whiny little mosquito is actually the man from Toronto. Gentlemen, trust me. I'm the man from Toronto. In a way, it was a bit like watching an unimpressed dad who had been left with a baby all day, or an old dog having to deal with a new pup. Harrelson showed irritability towards Hart's character that gained an affectionate tint as the film played out, and was very relatable. There was plenty of absurd action too, which I'm always a sucker for in the right setting. Slow motion running from unnecessarily massive explosions, just like the 90s used to make. Some of the combat set pieces were fun to watch. However, I wasn't huge as a fan of the one-shot fights that definitely weren't one-shot. Where they tried to blend and cuts together was pretty noticeable and really took me out of the moment on more than one occasion. Something I thought was an odd choice, however, was the PG-13 rating. This man from Toronto seemed to be tailor-made for. This definitely restricted how far they could take things, and I think to have taken the leap to the higher age bracket would have paid off massively. In spite of its issues, however, The Man from Toronto really wasn't the terrible time I'd feared it would be. A decent buddy pairing definitely did a lot of heavy lifting here. Let there be no misunderstanding about that, but as far as harmlessly average casual viewing goes, there's definitely a lot of far worse titles out there on Netflix or any streaming service for that matter. But of course, what did you think of the Netflix film The Man from Toronto? Leave a comment in the comment section below. As always, give us a thumbs up on the video if you like it. Subscribe to the channel for even more great content. And hit that bell notification button to be notified of future videos. And if you want to support the show, you can buy us a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash cinemagold. As always, thank you so much for watching and listening. We will see you next time.